So today what we're going to talk about is some items here and what's new in Salary Scam 2021 <clears throat> more in depth is additional stock types available in your stock manager. We're talking about the round and then also the defining with the bounty box and also predefined box in the take TV. And then we'll talk about uh, picking amounts and how this could be a powerful tool for automation if you use it. Okay, so first thing I want to talk about is the new stock types. So if I go into my feature manager and I either right click or a little left click to edit my stock, I now have this item here. And I also have this item for cylindrical. I can define cylindrical here and I can define it along the axis, which is my origin that on the on the CAD side of things, or I can create a fixture coordinate and grab that um, or the center of the centroid. So what I can do here on this one as well, which is new, this one and this one are new. This is a predefined one where I can go in here and find, change this to what I want and override what I have here, but I can start with something that I have in my stock sizes. And then once I get what I want, I can save it back to the TechDB, or also I can go and I can also change the material type as well. Save it back to the TechDB. Okay, based on that. All right, so in the, and where that's being housed, let me just okay out of this. If I go to my technology database, what we'll see here is we have this new under mill. Remember the tech DB when you open it up defaults to what your increments are of your current document and also um, mill. It, it'll always def default to the mill tab. And what this button does, people ask every once in a while, so I'll show you if I, Look in there, it just kind of rolls this in and rolls it out. Okay, so the mill and under, and this is a new location here for stock sizes. I can, these are the ones that these first five here are what come you know, loaded in your tech DB as a, as a default. I added these to myself so you can load and add those in here. You can copy from what exists and then go ahead and change the dimensions and link it to a material type specifically as well and make it your default. Okay. I'll close out of there for now. So this one I'm going to do is I'm going to define it with a round. So I'm going to go back in here. And I'm going to go here and click on round and we'll see that it grabs a round shape. Okay, it's going to do along the Z. Here's my Z. It's going off the origin. Okay, so I really wanted to do the X. So I'm going to change this to the X. And now we'll see it grabs that. If we look to get normal to here. Previous view. And we get, we'll click on this here and get normal too. We'll see it does the bounding box by, by um, default. And also it's reading my part as well as the, you know, the depth of my part for what you see here. So this here is my outside diameter. This here is my stock length. And this here is the bottom of the stock absolute. So if I wanted to offset this, I could. So that's what this is asking here. It's negative that. So I really want to do another um, piece of an inch. We'll see that. See how it went the wrong way. I did the negative there. We actually want to add a quarter to that. And we'll see how that jumps. Because I want to be eighth inch off. I already added an eighth, so I'm going to add a quarter to get that. So we could do that as our stock. Okay, and I could change this diameter if I want to, change it to seven, whatever I had. And maybe this is um, inch and a half, right? Something like that. And notice how that jumped based on that. So I'm gonna go back and actually offset that. And we'll see if you wanna go, oop, I did negative. So we have the length of inch and a half, and then we want to do let's actually make this eight times two. Something like that. Actually, it's let's make this five eights. Something like that, right? 
And then since I added that, let's make this 1.75. But then this will become negative 1.75. Oh, I hit the return. So we'll just shim, shave that off. That's fine. So offset parameters is telling me this is 061. Let's really make this. That's on top. And then if we do this one, let's do 0.25, something like that. Yeah. Something like that. Okay. Then I can load this as a default. I can set it as my default. Okay. So for now, I'm going to click OK on that. That's what we can use for stock. We'll change some stock here in a little bit. OK. I do want to change my coordinate system. OK. So we can do a predefined coordinate system, or we can modify this. So we're at the mercy of how this thing is modeled, essentially, for our coordinate system. So we'd have to follow this triad down here or the one that you see here. So what we're going to do here is we're going to move this. But we don't have anything flat or anything straight that, we, that I see here. So what we want to do is we can actually line it up with our plane, our planes that are here. Okay, we could use this plane too, but the danger of that is someone deletes it in the tree, you may lose your reference. So I would use the front, top, and right that are always here. Remember, we can rename these, but we never can delete them. And I have this fly out by clicking here or clicking the button over here that flies that out on my feature tree. Okay, so I want to actually change my X direction so it's running this way. Going this way. This is my bed. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my stock. You can see it's going to put that out there. Notice I get these little nodes that I can use. So I'm going to do that. Put that right at the top of my stock. So I have stock boundary box. And then from there, what I'm going to do is use my planes to rearrange it. So I want my X to go this direction where the Z is going now. So I'm going to do point to that what's perpendicular to the what plane is perpendicular to that currently. So I'll hover over these and we'll see the front looks good. It's right. I actually want the front. So I need to click in this box. That would help. And then I'm going to click on this. And now we'll see we have our X and our Y. And we could use another option if it I didn't do that. And we can toggle this one way or the other to get here. You can always pick two options here. But not three, but you can usually pick two and then toggle between these to get them where you want. So I'm going to accept that. Okay, and for now, I'm going to hide this just so it's not distracting us. Okay, and then I want to do options. So I'm going to do holes here. And I'm going to tell this I have drills anything from an inch below. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and Extract machine will features. Okay. So it's going to go ahead, grab a little pocket. I'm not as matter to me right now. What I want to see here is my holes here. Okay. So I have these holes here that I can drill or make here. So these kind of bolt holes. So that being said, when I go in here, I'm going to just solve for this for now. I'm generating out. I'm going to generate the tool pass based on those. Okay, so I have center drill, drill. Okay, we're coming back and doing a contour, but I just want to focus on the drills for now. So, what we have here is a center drill, drill. So, if I edit the drill, what's doing 2021 as well is I can go to drill parameters. Now I have a picking values I can change. Okay, so with that being said, what I can do. is actually change my pecking, okay? So what this allows me to do is allows me to create some animation, create some automation inside the TechDB with this availability. So say you have, um, you can do a percentage of the tool diameter, right? Let me get this back up here, percentage of the tool diameter. You can do percentage um, or the input value, whatever I put in here, okay? I also can do percentage of the foot length. Well, what's nice about the, that is say you have a drill range of zero to one. So I'm gonna say okay here and just kind of show you what I did on my tech TV or my uh, options for auto feature. I have drills 
anywhere from zero to one inch. Okay, so I'm gonna do one point one, something like that. Or you can even do O one, whatever you want to do. So anything, any any diameter or any any circular feature above one inch that I don't have a drift for. So if you only have three quarters, you could do point seven six, something like that. But I'm just gonna do a range. I'm gonna say one zero to one inch for drills I have. I have a lot of drills. There's a lot. I know you no one has that many drills, but say you could set that up as a range uh, based on what you have in your tech TV and what you have in your machine. So you can set the drill pegging length here. If I go back into here, and I can set it to the fluid length. The length of the fluid depends on the length of the drill. So what I can do in the based on drill i can click this and then it's going to do a percentage okay based on that so what we could do also with the tool diameter um you know these are based on what we're doing here so i can go back here and change this percent to four percent i can change this to two percent whatever i want okay based on that and what i'll do is i'll just click okay for now and let that update and then just so that updates for me and then what I can do is I can go into my tech TV and change my pecking to a certain percentage that I want to do. And I can then do that for each of my tools. And then it'll do the same static amount essentially for that. So what you can do is uh, you can set a range. Like I'm saying, you can set a range, you control the peck amount based on the percentage of the drill diameter size. And then from there, this will create a static peck amount for each drill essentially, because what you're doing, you're automatically adjusting the peck amount for each different drill diameter in your tech DB, if you go and change this setting. Okay. You know, in there's a lot of drills in there from zero to one, but say if you wanted to do that, you could. So maybe you have five or six drills that you have. You can make sure that those are the ones that are in your tech DB, you can change the setting. So then when you do it, it automatically picks your drill. So based on your hole size, it'll have this set it right away. And then you don't have to worry about changing that each time or changing it based on the tool size, it'll change it for you, okay? Let's see here. So there's that, and then with that being said, what we can, what I wanna show you here is the next thing we'll talk about is bottom of the stock, okay? What's, I didn't have this one on my list, so let me share my list here again. So we we went through all these already. So I'm gonna add a little bonus one here since we got some time. Is we have a additional stock types and then option bounty box and then predefined and then also peck amounts we just talked about. And then also we're gonna talk about the other one here, which is your um, settings and your tech to be. So just as a review, so you guys can take a look at this. Here's where we can pick cylindrical stock, okay? Which would be this one here I have selected, and then this one here just as a review. And then it'll do this and pick the bounding box automatically if I do that. I don't have to draw a sketch anymore. Before I had to draw a circular sketch and then define it with a sketch and then pick the sketch. That was, this button was right here, okay? I can still do that though, if I choose to do so. You can do that and then I can align it based on the origin. So remember wherever my, how this is modeled, that's where we want to align it to because we align our stock with the cam, with, with the CAD coordinate system, not the work offset. If we already have it def defined, we define it with the CAD coordinate system. Okay. And then remember under here, we could go to FCS coordinate if we already created our own work coordinate system, if we want to. Okay. And then Stock type, we can do this in the Tech TV. We can go ahead and define different stock sizes inside the Tech TV and then go and browse to them, pick them, choose them, and modify them too. So this helps us locate where we want to put it based on how our models, the model that we're currently um, trying to program. We want to use this to flip this around to get this. And remember, we go off of the origin of the coordinate system, or if you use that, define an FCS, we can do that as well. We also can link it to a specific material. 
you can that we're doing that one. And if we create something new, we can always save it back to the tech TV and house it there. Okay. So this is where we would house it in the tech TV. This is what it currently comes with for a mill inch. You have these different sizes and stock IDs that are in here. So you can grab one and do a copy and then modify whatever you want and change the settings on the space of the sizes. And also click here, the material, this will fly up. And you can click a, a different material if you want to, link it to a specific one. Review on probing. So we were talking about this where we can go ahead and allow you to do that. So you can also set the percent of the tool diameter or the flute length. And then what you can then do is based on your different drill sizes, you can have the setting, you can have a, what a constant or what you would call like a static amount for each based on size and pick a, a, a standard that way. And then that way, each time I change my drill size, once I like what I have set, I can always have that for that drill size based on the diameter tool. And like I said, you can do this for all of your drills that are fall suit for all your drills that are inside that are inside the, the tech DB if you want to, but usually you just do the drills that are pertain to you off the bat, of course, but you, you could customize your tech to do that. Which adds even more automation. Okay. End conditions. This is the one I wanted to, this is the bonus one I want to talk about. So what we allows us to do, this is very popular with uh, people that are like always like laser, water jet, routers, um, more popular with them. You could still use it for milling depends on what you're doing if you're constantly doing the same thing. If you're always leaving an offset at the bottom for in your in your in your fixture as well to hold down or to hold your material, then you can flip it over and, and, and cut the rest off. But this is popular for the router type people because what they can do is they can always say bottom of the stock, or you can always set this as an end condition when the boss perimeter type is selected. So anytime I want to, or what I can do is go in here and set this as a default. So when I do an open pocket, it does something specific. But on our perimeter, which we usually do, you know, a perimeter type, it's going to go around, not the open pocket. The perimeter that we can actually go here. Let me show you. In the tech DB, we can go to the perimeter. Okay, I'll go to default. That button is new. Where I went again, I clicked kind of fast. Is I went here. This always defaults to here. Then I went right to here. Remember, these two are new standard stock sizes that we can add and then the this one here and i can do perimeter boss so that's going to go around the perimeter only and so it's like like a laser like a water jet and like a router um we can go ahead outside outside perimeter of it and cut the profile if i always want to for this it always go to the bottom of the stock, I can say to the bottom of the part, you know, whatever I want to do, I can offset that distance if I want to, but then it's always a constant and then I can make that as my default for that. So then when I program that, I don't have to worry about going in and make sure it's doing what I want it to do. I don't have to, it does all the feature recognition, it does what I want it to do. So even more automation that I can make a standard of my parts for my parts inside my technology database and make you more efficient. Okay. Here, let me just move this out. Hopefully, uh, delete. Let me move this up to there, and I can move this. We will like that. Let me move this over for you. Like that, so we have it. So, not like that. So, what I've been doing over here is just to show you this, so you have it for your reference. Is I'm gonna share this. So here, this kind of gives you uh, what I was talking about for the automation side of things. So, in your tech TV, you can set the Drill pack amount using the extended length of the. So, say if you had like extended length um, drill, you had a jobber drill, a stub length drill, different types of drills and different lengths, of course, different flute sizes. So, I can, for the stub length, the flute is different than all the other drills and so on. So, I'm just kind of giving an example. So, you can set the pack amount by the drill's flute length. So, it's limiting the pack length and not going, you know, too deep in, in each pack. 
So for example, you can set the range for your drills and your tech DB based on that or based on the percentage of your drill diameter or, or um, like I said, the, the flute length, whatever you want to do in there, which creates a static or, or um, fixed um, tech amount for each drill. And essentially you're automating your tech amount for each different drill because the, if the drill size changes, then your static amount is going to change for your peck as well, the length based on that. Okay, just adding more automation with this new functionality in 2021. Or you can just individually change it if you want to. Okay, that's all I had today. Uh, feel free to reach out if you got any other questions and we'll go from there. Thanks everyone for joining. Have a good day.